Sorry about the full start, but thank you for coming. Yang Tin Rupa Chai is a Toku Geshe Laram and monk from Sera Monastery. For the last decade, he has led a team of Buddhist scholars to recatalogue Buddhist texts. He is here thanks to the So Why Project, a visitorship for traditional scholars, organized by the Oxford Center for Buddhist Studies. Dr. Jonathan Samuels is the Junior Research Fellow in Tibetan and Himalayan Studies at Dawson College. He also holds the title of Geshe and researches Tibetan medieval monastic education and the practice of public debate. Please join me in welcoming Jonathan and Yangtze. Mm -hmm. um, can I, sorry, can I just say something at the start? Uh, so, Richard asked me to interpret for him, which I didn't know that I was going to be asked to do. I'm quite happy if someone, if I don't have to do both things. I'll, I'll, I'll translate. But I must make it clear, unless someone else does it, because yeah. I'm not, you know, familiar with this terminology. Sure. Yeah, the, then you need to want to see it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. Oh. <coughs> First, uh, hello everybody. Uh, good evening. evening. Uh, I explain in uh, Tibetan, um, but here uh, um, Lama Jawla helped me translate it to English. I think it is uh, better for me. <laughs> so I direct you uh, Tibetan language. Use Tibetan language, okay? Mm. Oh, Shira the same talk uh, about uh, examination. So we talk, uh, we dialogue, we uh, dialogue about uh, examination, okay? Mm. Uh, about Gishi uh, uh, examination. Mm. That and that the Jute Gishi Jute Kolo Shuet, La Sidani, Sanje Vichulu in Angola, Jute T, Sanje Tundinde, Sesu Vicuni, the Jumishas, Jute T. So, in terms of uh, Geshi examinations, the tradition of examination, mm -hmm. and during, uh, during the time of Lord Buddha, also examinations take, uh, did take place. Buddhist examinations. Mm. Uh, so I have uh, just written abbreviations of quite quite so kind of summaries of this system here, and if you read it, it should really uh, be uh, you know, quite um, uh, informative here in this. <coughs> So in terms of in a Vinayana, uh, one passage, one section from Vinayana discourse, it says that it kind kind of a, a classifies or enumerates twenty five qualities that a teacher must acquire. In order to be able to teach or accept the disciples. Mm. One qualification is that, like maybe 25 qualifications, and one of them is that to be able to uh, memorize and then recite uh, from memory. Uh, or by heart, to learn, learn by heart all the three uh, denos, denosum, mm. is what, 
so this is where the, the, the one of the requirements is that to be able to recite from memory uh, all the uh, texts from Tripitaka and that is uh, a requirement not only to memorize but also to be able to recite it from memory and that is a condition a condition it's a very early ancient condition from uh, from the time of Lord Buddha that be na lu ju ji bo di eh ka san xu ye yi ah ge jia ah di ka san xi le la fu ji di bo de xin ju ji ji di xi le de song de de ja ga na lu la xi ju ji bo di kan de chu ru se di bo de uh, when it comes to about the examination system inside Tibet, uh, Sherila is going to talk about it as he's, uh, he studied it and he kind of investigated into it. And I'll talk about the examination system uh, in India, mm. at, the Tibetan, at the Tibetan monastic institutions in India. About the Gishi. Oh, Gishi, yeah. Mm. Uh, the Gishi, the Gishi, the uh, with regards to India, the system, the examination, Gishi examination system in India, there, there has been some transformation, some change. Uh, a change took place uh, from the pre-1959 system and uh, so there's definite, some kind of definite changes took place and uh, the system uh, that existed pre-1959 is uh, distinct, slightly distinct uh, from the post-1959. Mm. Uh, after the arrival, escape flight of His Holiness the Dalai Lama to India in 1959, then His Holiness saw the need uh, to introduce uh, reforms to the Geshi um, examination system and he saw a need uh, for modernization of this system and also saw a need to adapt it uh, to the modern times and to also to secular uh, education systems. Mm. Yeah. And a new system, a new, new uh, Geshi examination system uh, was formulated and established uh, in 1969 uh, on the 20th May. At the. Where is it? In Yeah. Okay, in, in Dramsala, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Any the uh, 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 sorry, I've forgotten to ask. Also, the reason to to undertake to introduce these reforms was also to bring all the schools of Tibetan Buddhism together and to introduce a common standard system that applies to uh, or in, sort of integrates. All the, all the schools of Tibetan Buddhism. Then mm -hmm. yeah. 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 
So these are the committee formed of devotees and abbots of great monasteries assembled together to, for the purpose of uh, establishing or putting down, formulating new um, rules and structure for the gifted degree, and that's the first time, like the first meeting. Jujigi, and then I mean this is itself an institute, institute like kind of like an examination institute, isn't it? No, no, yeah. no. Okay, the name of the institution. And this institution is established to carry out these reforms. Uh, that's in 1969, it was agreed, the founding of the institution is agreed in 1973. Mm, then uh, they started again uh, uh, establishing mm. or formulating rules and procedures uh, uh, and, and texts uh, and <coughs> different uh, stages mm. of the system. All that was kind of started going into the details of the institution and of the examination system in 1973. Mm. Uh, and then in 1975, uh, all this was put into practice. Mm. So this is the name of the, uh, this academic institution and given by, the name itself was given by the uh, private teacher, mm. two teachers, the senior teachers of his own, mm. the Dalai Lama. So in the Gelu-Yutil uh, the Gelu examination and the framework of this examination that shows that how also the scope of the <coughs> examination uh, that integrates uh, the Kargumbagatsuyore, mm. Gelu. Mm. Yeah, the, the great, the just, three, just, just the just three great monasteries mm. and Tashi Lumbo, and it, it, it kind of puts down and explains and describes the scope and the structure of the examination system. Mm. Um, so in order to be able to take the examination uh, in accordance uh, to this academic institution, the standards of it, there are several qualifications, uh, uh, several qualifications are required, there are several, but to list a few of them here. Mm -hmm. So one is each college, each monastic college. Uh, so all the candidates that who are um, who are entitled to take these examinations, they are required to, to have gone through, to have graduated, or to have at least learned or studied for 17 years uh, in uh, these different colleges of the monasteries. Mm. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's the, 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 the least, the, the kind of conservative uh, estimation of the years. Mm. And then another uh, condition, another vital condition is that uh, after 
going through or undergoing 17 years of study at these prospective colleges, uh, they need to take an exam at these individual colleges and need to get at least 66% uh, mm -hmm. the, in, the, in the final <coughs> exams to, to be able to qualify for, uh, for the ultimate mm -hmm. examination. Each year, uh, each college can uh, send in or um, can select 50 um, candidates, examination candidates, but it should not exceed that number. Mm. So, can you sum up in seven minutes, please? It's just a small thing. Can I Of course. is a bit of a little 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 so they're, they're, when once one is qualified to take exam to geshi examinations, then one need to study for it, and that takes another six years, and then these six years are again staged, and as you can see listed on, uh, on the slide. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. each year has got its own kind of academic um, achievements that mm -hmm. we need to. And then once one studied six, after successfully studying for six years and completing the program, <coughs> then you need to defend uh, one, it's almost like a viva, uh, at the, the, the Molumchen, mm. at the great prayer monastery, uh, the prayer festival, where one need to defend one's um, degree. Mm. Then public, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. In terms of venue and the time, I won't go into it, but I think I've said it already. <laughs> oh, thank you, yeah. And then when, when the examination is taking place, there we're talking about how many examiners are there. So, I think there are about 50 to 60 uh, examiners. Yeah. And so there's, there's another specific department actually who's dealing with the examination process. And then the <coughs> textbook as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The syllabus for examination. <coughs> So we've got three, uh, no, sorry, nine, uh, nine different courses. Mm. So the, the, all the principal, British principal, uh, canonical texts of courses there. And on top of that, uh, then uh, you have got um, religious history, uh, Tibetan grammar, and Kavya poetry. Uh, and and uh, uh, modern science sciences. Mm. So, if we subdivide these courses into sort of a sub sub courses or sub syllabuses uh, themes, then there in six um, years of study, one in, needs to take examination in eighty seven subjects. Mm. So even in terms of if we take Uma Madimakaya example there, twenty-five. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so this is how one sets the exam. Yeah, so each year the setting of the exam. Is yeah. So all the, the all the exam, exam paper. And the theme of the paper, <coughs> everything is different each year. So there, there uh, all in all, there are three forms 
of examinations, three modes of examinations, uh, the debating uh, and compositional writing uh, and the composition and the writing, authoring of and in terms of Zhongju, it's the composition that is when one writes or authors books. When we say that the written examination is examinations where one needs to answer questions on paper. So if we look at Garam itself, then it has got nine uh, debating examinations, nine, and nine, nine, writing. nine writing examinations, and five debating examinations. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Written six and debating five. Mm. So the Haram degree is uh, two years and it has got um, five uh, debating examinations and yeah. so, so each debating examination lasts an hour. So if, it's, if, if one needs to write a book or um, has got a specific thing to write a book on, then it's a different system of examination. Mm. So this is the time, how long the duration of the examinations. Mm. So this is... Mm. I'll just say a little bit about last year's uh, the great examination. Mm. Last year there were 862 candidates. Mm. So eight, the 82 out of that uh, has failed the examination. Mm. <laughs> Uh, and 28 uh, had to take leaves due to unforeseen circumstances. <laughs> so this is the last day of the examination. Mm. Uh, so this is during the time the written, the taking written examination. Mm. And all the people who are standing up or sitting down, those are uh, uh, vigilators. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so if, if, if you bring in pieces of paper or something, you will be expelled from the exam, exam room, but also you're not allowed to take any exams for another year. So, so this is when I, when I took the examination and I was in this amongst this yeah. crowd uh, in 2002. <laughs> So, yeah. Um. <laughs> so my thank you for uh, thank you for the museum and thank you also for for. So my talk is going to be much more, mm, not so specific, let's say. Uh, there are actually many interesting things, things which I, I find rising from uh, just talk. Uh, if you notice these um, um, <clears throat> equivalences which are created, uh, for example, in the, if you notice, the, the, there's an attempt to equate, uh, create these equivalences between the 
uh, modern systems, uh, BA, uh, MA, and so forth. This is, a, this is an interesting feature. Also, you might be asking yourself, how far do some of these exam formats go back, like the written form and the debate form and so forth? I, I'm not going to go into all that at the moment because I'm taking a much more sort of general um, historical perspective, but uh, if I can answer questions at the end if we get time. Um, so, I wanted to say first of all that this seems like a rather niche topic, you know, fo focusing upon the, the Gilup examination system. And I wanted to uh, broaden it a little bit. Um, first of all, by pointing out that another interesting parallel that we have is um, that the degrees that we're so interested in, uh, from you know, BA to DPhil and so forth, these are the um, these come to us via the medieval scholastic system in Europe, and uh, so the universities, you know, the, uh, the scholastic system uh, moved into the universities, and there was a secularization eventually happening and so forth. But much of what was referred to, even you, you heard in the talk, there was some some things uh, like the the Viber that we do. Um, so this comes down from this uh, medieval scholastic system, and there are some very surprising parallels in the traditional Tibetan system. Um, there's also this reintroduction of uh, a, a thesis. This is a new feature of the, for the Haram. Um, uh, so there are questions about how far does this go back in Tibetan, uh, Tibetan history as well. But anyway, um, uh, I have been looking at uh, Tibetan, some, let's say, historical, taking a histo historical perspective, but I've also been looking at some other traditions. So there are these interesting features uh, parallels with the uh, uh, medieval scholastic system in Europe, but there are also some within Asia. So, some surprising ones with the Japanese system, um, um, which I'm not going to explore now, but they, they, uh, for some reason these have never been looked into before. So, uh, a system of uh, what I'm most interested in, interested in today is uh, t uh, testing and titles, you know, the awarding of titles on the basis of the, of the testing. Um, so, uh, the Tibetan tradition itself is not so aware of these other scholastic traditions, but what it really cares about is the Indian tradition, and asserting that uh, the Tibetan traditions are, they have their origin in, the, uh, in this Indian system. So I think most of you, if not all, will have heard of these, what they call these great monastic universities of Nalanda and uh, Vikramashila. Uh, so these have a very long history, uh, stretching back from the 5th century to the uh, 12th century. Uh, and uh, these are, the Tibetan church is very much aware of these, uh, these uh, places and is uh, very uh, strongly asserts that the origins of their traditions uh, you know, are to be found in these places. Um, so I was just going to look at that. I, I, these also, we find continuous references to this in, uh, um, let's say, scholastic uh, literature. We also find the, the founding of monasteries, like in uh, Pemble, very famous uh, monastery called Nalanda. Founded in 1436, this you know, it actually took the name of this this uh, institution. So they're obviously asserting this continuity, stretching back to India. They they gained their uh, scholastic system um, from there. So uh, what first of all, oh yes, uh, when it comes down to this uh, continuity, I, I suggest that it's you know it's a little bit vague what's being suggested. Um, if we're trying to evaluate the, the you know the the, the the these claims, but it seems to come down to three things. Specifically, you have texts and individual figures, that is, you have teachers going from India, uh, from these institutions, and uh, teaching and settling in Tibet. You also have translators going from uh, Tibet, or people training in these institutions and then returning to Tibet. Um, and the second one is uh, uh, this style of uh, study. This is something, again, which is, um, uh, which Tibetans in the contemporary scholastic uh, uh, system, they would say, well, this comes from Nanda, this comes from Vikram and Shila. Uh, so this dialectical approach, and I've got here this uh, agonistic debate form, that means like sort of combative uh, debate form between two people, and using this as a style of, uh, style of learning. Uh, and then thirdly, uh, and uh, so I'm interested in the state that's specifically today, but you do hear it quite often, that the whole system of testing and titles itself, well, Okay, uh, it is itself somehow, this is derived from, from India, and there's this uh, uh, sort of continuity in, in traditions there. So it seems to come down to this, these claims of, of continuity, yeah, when it, when it gets specific at all. Now, in relation to the first one, uh, there's good grounds for, well, there's historical um, uh, evidence for, you know, the, uh, the, the, some form of uh, communication, uh, individuals traveling, that they might have taken certain traditions back. Um, 
in terms of the uh, dialectical approach, uh, what we become aware of is that we are, there's actually very little is known about what was, how study was approached in these Indian institutions. So you know, they were there for many, many centuries, but the amount of uh, real information we have uh, is, uh, is very limited. Uh, but there, are, there is evidence of um, this dialectical approach. But um, what we have uh, arising from this monastery are, uh, we have these core topics, okay? Well, we have a, a number of them at least. Uh, we can say what this is the uh, these are the the shun oh yeah yeah uh, which uh, which I was referring to earlier on these are the real core of the current Gino system yeah so the thing, the main things one studies um, um, now these as categories these like conceptually to create like different uh, areas of study to to delineate them this goes back to the Sangha tradition with the possible exception of one let's say. Uh, so that we do have continuity there in terms of the uh, of the subjects which are studied, but not necessarily in terms of the names of the titles. Um, so, yeah. Now this is a list of titles, which is it seems almost like an ev evolutionary list. Uh, these are the premier titles. Now, one important point to make is this. One of the most important points about the scholastic tradition is this: it is not a, a Giluk system, okay? Uh, the type, the the process of the the the, the practice of uh, defining a, a curriculum, as I say, goes back goes back to the um, to this monastery of uh, Sangul. Yeah. Now uh, that's important. What they did was they got rid of tantra and they said tantra is not a subject to be studied in the Sangi doesn't fit into this, and they defined these four or five different uh, uh, different topics, okay? But it is not. As is commonly said, I, I think uh, to, to describe this as a Kadam tradition, a Kadam monastery, is, is a mistake. Because every person from all the different traditions, and I, I actually I want to say that the whole notion of there being four schools in this era, like the 12th century, 13th century, is anachronistic. Yeah. There's a, a tremendous amount of flow between monasteries. People may say they belong to a particular tradition, but there, there's not a, a sense that there's one style of study which is related with a particular tradition. Yeah, so that's a very important point. Um, but anyway, what we find is um, we've got this, uh, s we have a, s a slight evolution of these titles, okay? Um, what I mean by that is this, that in, in uh, uh, the 10th century, 11th century, uh, 10th century, I'm not sure, 11th century, 12th century particularly, we have like historical texts where they have, yeah, yeah. Uh, they have these, um, uh, the title, Kishi appears, uh, and, uh, Later on, of course, in the contemporary system, we have the title Gishi, which is used. Now, the, sometimes the problematic uh, assertion of, uh, of tradition is that uh, you look back at historical texts and you suggest that there's a continuity with these. You know? So the older Gishi is, uh, is the same as the, the later Gishi. This is, is not really the case. It's not at all clear that the Gishi in the, uh, originally was associated with any particular form of study. It definitely meant someone who's learned. Um, but um, the, the first. Uh, the first title, which could be said to have like a uh, testing, uh, a, a specific curriculum and some uh, testing associated with it, was this this one called the Kashi. Yeah, it has different spellings here. But the, so the Kashi, uh, 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 it's not exactly sure when it was introduced, but in the area which I'm looking at in the in the 14th, the end of the 14th century, it was still the, in the main, the highest degree associated with four topics. There's not complete agreement necessarily about what those topics are. But they're probably mainly the ones from the uh, the ones I showed you earlier on, with the exception of Majimaka. Okay, mm -hmm. and then we have this expansion. But by the way, I should say this: that the the, the, the scholarship which has been, you know, the academic which work which has been done this so far, they haven't gone into so much detail with this. But we see it, expansion. Sorry, I should explain the terms a little. So the the ka, the, it, it refers to it's from the word pillar. So it means something like a foundation. Okay, so it's like a master of four topics, a master of, and then the next one is a master of ten topics. And the last one is the master of Ramjamba, okay? Is the master of multitude of topics or something like that. So it looks like it's an expansion of the curriculum. Uh, it's not so straightforward. It's not such a straightforward evolution like that. But there is some change which, which happens during the period which I'm looking at. So movement from the, uh, the, an idea that from four texts we should go to ten texts or more than, more than four at least. And uh, so I'm looking at the sort of circumstances surrounding that particular one, okay? So that's... that's very interesting. There, there are definitely, um, so this is an important point to make, there are definitely, uh, there's a system of uh, uh, testing, 
uh, public testing going on there, but it's only it's not as closely standardized as as we might often think, and as actually has been uh, projected in works like uh, things that uh, you know George Draper has done on this, and uh, uh, Roger Jackson has written about this as well. So they have this idea of a very standardized system. It's not so straightforward. There's lots more variation. Yeah. And uh, much of the change was not coming from the size of the institution, it was coming from the size of the individual. Yeah, so it's not like an agreed system. Um, but I, there's not much time, and I, I wasn't going to spend much more time, but uh, if we just look at this last title, Jam Jam. Okay, so some of you may recognize this is a, a title which is used these days. Now, this was the dominant title for centuries. The Gilu, <laughs> that's like the, the, uh, the Gishi, is probably reintroduced, and it's only standardized much later on during the time of the main standardization it happens during the time of the 5th Dalai Lama and the 13th Dalai Lama. So this is very interesting because these are two times where there's some form of either creation of a state, modern state, or the reassertion of this, or attempts to reform. So it's very interesting that these changes happen during this time. But, uh, unlike in other places, like it seems in Japan, where this uh, system of creating uh, uh, a testing regime and offering titles is very much linked with the state. It is that the state is granting these things. The whole system in Tibet comes from the monasteries, not from a state. It's happening in the pre-state era, as if you like. Okay. Um, so in terms of this Ramjam, this gets, in, it's, it, when it's contracted, it gets uh, uh, making the different ranks from it. So actually the ones which we initially mentioned, the Haram, Karam, you could also have the, the Zhijam and so forth. So this Jam is from this term, Ramjam. Yeah? So there's this continuity in terms of that title. There's also during the uh, during the the, the, fifth, the time of the fifth Alam, uh, the creation of these uh, standardisation occurring within the medical institutions. Okay, and they're taking the same titles and they're creating their own titles with this term, you know, the terms like uh, uh, and so forth. Yeah. So they're taking their inspiration from the the scholastic system. And then also in the modern, we, we had this, uh, the, the, we had the equivalents for the BA and the MA and the PSC and so forth. So again, in the in the contemporary system in Tibet, they take their lang their language. It goes back to this. Um, uh, actually, they look to the medical tradition mainly, and they take the, the the titles are drawn from that. So you have the whole idea of a scholastic title. Uh, it, it's taking its inspiration from the the monastic system basically. But there is this interesting sort of. Um, uh, you know, return to the same theme, at least in terms of the name, at least, yeah? Um, and there's a lot more we have to learn about the standardization of processes. But um, um, I wasn't going to say too much more, um, but I think that it's very interesting that, uh, um, particularly this, the attempts to standardize happening during the times where this, there's some form of assertion of state, or ideas that uh, there should be uh, modification systems. Um, uh, it, it would be particularly interesting to look at what happens during the time of the, the 13th Dalai Lama, what's happening with the, the standardization of the, uh, the Gishi system and uh, testing processes. And if at all with, within any of this, and I'm not certain there is, but if at all within any of this, there has been like uh, influence from other traditions, other countries. Yeah. If there was, for example, during the time of the 13th Dalai Lama, you know, if there's uh, influence from the, the Raj, you know, so we know, for example, in terms of the standardization, of, I mean, Changes to the army system, you know, the military system. Then there was very much looking outside for uh, for inspiration for that. Um, and then we have okay, I'm, I'm just this this final point actually. Um, yeah. So when we're looking at these uh, tests and titles, this whole thing, I think the uh, what we really need to do is move it outside uh, academically, at least move it outside the sort of narrow area which its association with the Gilug tradition currently restricts it to. Um, we should be looking for uh, what type of relations there are in terms of uh, uh, the standardization of learning processes, development of curricula, uh, standards for testing, standard, uh, regulating these. Uh, we have to look for uh, the relations between the monastic system and the medical system, and perhaps others. These, these are two most obvious ones in, in Tibetan history. And then, we, uh, secondly, we could be looking at uh, the origins and influence and historical relations which might have led to changes in Tibet. And this, finally, should lead us to some sense, hopefully, which I don't think we have at the present time, uh, what's unique about the Tibetan system. You know, if we just view things in isolation, then it's 
you could say, oh yes, well, the, this skillet system is sort of unique and it goes back to India. But there are all these whole set of uh, possible relations, possible pathways, uh, various types of communication with different cultures and so forth, possible influences uh, that uh, we should be exploring. Okay, and that's partly what I'm doing in my work. I'm, I, I can finish now, leave a little bit of time if there's any. Uh, I'm not sure if there's time for dialogue between us or questions and answers, but anyway, I'll sort of finish there. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Well, first, we would appreciate if you to ask questions, Tricia. I don't like five minutes, and then to the public. <laughs> You'd appreciate it. Okay, if you have any. I'll give you a question. Oh. I'll give you a question. Yeah. Can you? Oh, yeah. Can I do anybody to understand me now? Uh,ジシ、ジュテコシュエディ、え、カザン。ジシ、ジュテコティ、シュトナヤオトシエジニ。ジシ、ジュテティダンバレ。ナイナツヤエディ、ダンダシラソマナシ、え、ジャハナロ